Okay, all I can say is buckle up, we got some issues to go over. Okay, I did this video a couple days ago, and it was called Lots of Crazy Claims on the Cause of Extreme Weather Events. Extreme now and global warming, global warming. So let's examine them. Now this was a video done by Sabine Hossenfelder. She's a, a renowned physicist and she's asking the question, how do we know it's us that is causing global warming? Because that's exactly what it says. Climate change is long term because of burning fossil fuels. And I do agree with that. All right, and she says, how can we tell that's what it's from? Well, I explained it. It's the scrubbing of our atmosphere that is expanding because of these expansion gases. So immediately I was, I, I neglected to talk about geoengineering, you know, the, the climate weather changes. And I'm going to talk about that right now because it, it, it certainly has an effect. It has nothing to do really with global warming. It causes severe rainstorms and and, um, and um, hail and so forth like that because it's seeding. They create crystals in the air to grow and get bigger and bigger and they think that that's going to do something. I don't know what they think it's going to do. Stop the sunlight from coming to the earth or whatnot. But we're going to look right now at Harvard what they have to say. Because I was, you know, I, I had a bunch of people come after me about, whoa, it's all geoengineering, you're crazy, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, Let's see what, what it has to say. It, it, geoengineering is minimal. It has very little effect on the atmosphere as a whole. In certain areas, yes. And they say, oh, we're covering all of India. Well, that's okay. But you, you're giving it seeds of where it's going to create crystals and, and rain and so forth. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. It's not going to overheat the earth. And that's what's happening now. The earth is being overheated. Now, very few people really know about geoengineering. All they hear is that word, oh, it's just ruining our atmosphere. Well, it's not good, I can tell you that, but it's not the end of the world, which is what's going to happen because of the expansion gases. And AR is from combustion, there's no question whatsoever. All right, geoengineering refers to a set of emerging technologies to manipulate the environment partially offsetting some of the impacts of climate change. Solar and, and solar, they want to keep the heat out. They think they can put a cloud around the earth and keep heat from coming down. It just doesn't work that way. Solar geoengineering in particular could not be a replacement for reducing emissions. They can't. They can't reduce the emissions or coping with changing climate. It's not going to cope with the changing climate, yet it could supplement these efforts. In other words, where there's no rain, they could maybe make it rain. I, I'm not saying they can't. That I, could, I, I believe they can do. So. What they're, we're going to talk about what actually is geoengineering, because most of the people that are coming after me, they have no idea what it even is. All right, there's two areas that they work in. One of them is to get rid of the carbon. It's called carbon geoengineering, called carbon dioxide removal. They want to get the carbon dioxide out. It's not the carbon dioxide that's causing the problem. It's the expansion gases. It is carbon dioxide, yes, but it's not the carbon part. All right. The other is solar geoengineering, which is to try to make a cloud around the Earth, also called solar radiation management. So we can keep that sunlight out and won't hit us and we'll be okay. No, not, not the case. All right. It's a modification, sunlight reflection. And there's large differences. All right, here's the real problem, is that the government and the, the scientists do not know what they're doing. They're following orders by somebody that has no clue what they're doing. They're going to expand ex gigantic projects for fossil fuels, to, and they're going to double them and all this stuff. Amidst the, there's a crisis going on. They don't understand. They're expanding the envelope of gases. And what happens is this right here. The gases keep expanding outward, and this is the ionosphere. Ions mean extra electrons. Electrons are heat. We're scrubbing through all the electrons that are in space that are called the quantum foam, and our electrons are getting hotter than hell out here, and I mean hotter than hell. It's 2,700 degrees or more out here, and the bigger it gets, the harder it scrubs, the more heat. 
2,700 degrees out here. Why? It's supposed to be cold. It's not cold, it's hot. Same thing with the sun. The sun's 10,000 on the surface. It's millions out here because that's the scrub zone. They just don't understand what they're doing. It's just incredible. There's no disputing this. Way out here, it's cold, yes, but there's still all kinds of particles out there. Right here, as we spin through space, and our globe spins around in circles and follows the sun and so forth, it scrubs this zone right here. And guess what? It's 1,500 degrees Celsius out there. It's hot as it can be, because this is the ionosphere. Nothing but electrons. And guess what? It's 2,000, well, 2,700 degrees or so Fahrenheit. Just checking it the heat. Guess what? Right underneath, it's minus 80 Celsius. That's because this is a dipole. The hotter it gets here, the colder it will get here. And they're saying, yeah, it's getting colder here, so we're not causing the problem. No, it's getting colder here because it's getting hotter out here, and it's getting hotter out here because it's scrubbing harder because we're inflating our atmosphere and we're the harder we get out here it's going to get hotter and hotter we get out here it's going to get hotter here it's hot 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 we keep getting it bigger and bigger it's going to get hotter and hotter that's exactly what happens to anything the bigger it gets the harder it scrubs the harder it scrubs the hotter it gets the hotter it gets here the colder it gets here and that's exactly what's happening now and that's what um, Sabine Hassenfeller said, she said, well, it's getting colder here, and so we know we're not really causing, or so, I, don't, I forget what they say, but it's getting colder here because it's getting hotter here. When it gets hot here, it gets cold here. Then it gets hotter down here because in between is the cold layer. It's just the way it works. Hot, cold, hot. So the colder it gets here, the hotter it's going to get here. The hotter it gets here, the colder it gets here. The colder it gets here, the hotter it gets here. And we are down where the hot is coming in and we're just getting crushed and also it's pressurized now much more pressure than before the more you blow up a balloon the harder it gets the harder it gets the harder it scrubs the harder it scrubs the more turmoil the more hurricanes the more all kinds of problems wind and hail and storms and hurricanes and tornadoes it's violence in the atmosphere and you're not going to get out of that violent until you reduce this volume and I don't see how it's possible and they're talking about going wild and expanding all of their gas look at this expansion of natural gases they're going to do this US going to approve the single biggest fossil fuel change in history government plans to produce double fossil fuels it's it's uh, it's out of control and they have no clue what they're doing okay I'm just gonna wrap it up with this the only possible way we have out of this is to stop burning stuff because we're expanding like crazy volcanoes emit a bunch of stuff yes that's just natural that's gonna happen no matter what and it's been happening right along so we can disaccount for that but we cannot disaccount for the expansion gases of burning physics of electron showers this is our only possible way out and I can show a way out and it will not be examined by the people we trusted to do the best job for us it's a, it's a tragedy this is what we're looking for <sighs> all right only possible solution we have is to use electron showers which create billions or trillions of electron volts but you have to be able to create electron showers they're doing it with proton proton collisions hadrons all this big gigantic gigantic machinery we don't need that we need to create neutrinos and we started with light so we started with neutrinos these are electron showers you see this right here this is what light is Light is muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos attached together, a black ball and a white ball. The black ball goes on its own. It's called a sterile muon all by itself. And the white goes into showers. We did this. Nobody else can do this. We did this right here by using a venturi and a simple laser, pulse red laser. Boom. And we use green and blue. They all do the same thing. Once they hit the venturi, the black separates out and the white goes. The white is what charges your car and runs things. That's electricity. And there's no expansion gases here whatsoever. There's no burning. 
all right? And here's the whole thing. They see these same particles at Fermilab when they smash things together in CERN. And here we are. We see them in the light. We should be able to take this light, because all they want to do is separate that particle from this particle. And then they get free energy. We can do this. We did it. These are here, and here it comes through, and it separates. The white separates from the black, and it creates electron showers. Electron showers create gigavolts, I mean just gigantic amounts of energy, and they just don't understand this. All we need to do, literally, and I mean I'm serious, this is simple. This is just going to be a solar collector right here. We're going to have a little laser. We're going to have thousands of them inside of here. These are tiny, microscopic, and they shoot out laser light, which is both black and white. And when it hits the Venturi, only the white can get through. There it is right there. And when it hits the solar collector, it, it drives it down, and you can run your car, your house, anything you want. It's called electron dipole flood theory, dipole electron flood theory. And in space, this is, this is just a shot with a CMOS camera. In space, you can see all these fields. All the particles flowing through space are being obstructed by other particles. So light slows down, light speeds up. I've shown this absolutely no question whatsoever. Right, here's light speeding up and exploding when it hits a Venturi. There's just no question about what I'm showing is correct. And when this light comes off the sun, all of those particles are going and they're leaving the sun. And they're coming and they're hitting us. And when they hit us, they hit our atmosphere that's scrubbing out here. So we're scrubbing, they're coming in, and we're it's ripping out there. It's 2,700 degrees. 2,700 degrees out here. And it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. It's getting colder below. The hotter it gets out here, the colder below. It's just the nature of the dipole particles. And then below that, it gets hot. So it's hot. First of all, it's cold out here. Then it gets hot. Then it gets cold, and then it gets hot where we are. And that's exactly what's happening. They just don't understand it. That's all it is. It's cold out here, real hot here, real hot. And the hotter it gets here, the colder it gets here. The colder it gets here, the hotter it gets here, and that's where we are. That's what global warming is all about, my friends. They just don't even have a clue. And they're doing all kinds of weather engineering, this and that. That could cause us problems, yes, but it's not causing the expansion. Without stopping the global expansion of these greenhouse gases, there's nothing we can do. Absolutely nothing. I don't care what they do with the rest of this stuff.